In 1978, the Atari VCS kept trying to fight its way into the homes of consumers all across the country. Atari spent $5 million on a marketing campaign to ensure that sales would be great for the holiday season. Okay, Atari, let's see your best pitch. One of the ways Atari tried doing this was by having the best lineup of video games available that no one else could offer. One of these was the sports game, Basketball. This was the very first basketball game to feature everything sports fans loved about the game. Jump balls, stealing, and half-court shots from downtown. Okay, I guess we'll have to wait a few years on that one. If sports is not your thing, then there's always Hangman. Okay, let's see. A? Hmm, is this word Adam? Nope. How about Adam? Oh, I know, Ajax! What the hell is this word? Away! Ah, oh, stupid piece of crap! What the hell is this supposed to be? I thought this was a kid's game, not a porno! One of the biggest games to come out of the holiday season for Atari was the game Breakout. Since the arcade game was so popular for them, it's a no-brainer that porting this game to the VCS only gave them continued success. The second hit game for Atari was called Night Driver. This was a driving game that broke the traditional driving overhead view for one that was a first-person view. Ah, sweet, it's just like driving my own car! Of course, this game is a pain in the ass to play. Ah! I'm out of here. Throughout 1978 and into 79, Atari continued adding more sports games to their roster like football, baseball, and bowling. <laughs> you missed me, you Other games were also released called Human Cannonball. All right, let's do this. ported version of Skydiver. I regret that day! And Canyon Bomber. All right, time to empty this canyon. This may take a while. 1979 also brought us Superman, which was the very first video game to be created around an established franchise. Find the phone booth in the game and you'll be able to take control of Superman so you can fly around, grab enemies, and even check out the sexy Lois Lane. Time to see what's underneath that dress with my x-ray vision. Damn these pixel limitations. Atari kept producing even more games from their arcade library like Circus, Steeplechase, and Outlaw. All right, you lousy varmint. Draw! No, that's a cactus, you idiot! <laughs> but Atari was not looking to give the consumer the ability to play from just their arcade library, but they also wanted to offer titles made by the competitors, like Space Invaders. So Atari then did the unthinkable and secured the rights to bring these types of video games to the VCS. This was the very first time in video game history that two competitors would join forces. And it was a move that helped make both of them more money, as well as making the VCS even more of a success. As the company rose in popularity, Nolan Bushnell began creating a lot of problems for the new owners of Atari. Nolan's vision for the company was to abandon the VCS and create a whole new console. Warner Communications' vision, on the other hand, was to keep the VCS and continue expanding their library of video games. After their conflicts for the future came to a boiling point, Warner had no choice but to fire Nolan from the company he had created. Now don't feel too badly for Nolan because shortly after that, he went on to create a popular chain of restaurants that combined video games with pizza. And he called it Chuck E. Cheese. Never go with Chuck e. Cheese. Atari kept sailing full speed ahead, and even though they blew away all their competition, one competitor managed to come along with a strategy that would start giving Atari a run for their money. Coming up in part 10, the Intellivision.
All right, guys, there you go. Another installment in the can. Make sure you check out past episodes there. Make sure you subscribe to this channel. And also make sure you check out the Irate Gamer series, which I just recently reviewed Donkey Kong. And until next time, game on.